Joining me now by phone, chairman of the one time chairman of the House Homeland Security uh, Committee and chairman of the subcommittee on counterterrorism, Congressman Peter King. Uh, Congressman, great to have you back in the program. I want to get your reaction first to the breaking news we've had today on these three additional suspects. Megan, I want to give uh, law enforcement tremendous credit for this. It shows that this investigation is ongoing. Uh, it shows that there's uh, you know, maybe more ramifications to this case than people thought at the start when they thought it was just two lone wolves. Now, today's uh, charges don't indicate that they were involved before the bombing. But on the other hand, if he trusted them enough to call them afterwards to dispose of evidence, to get rid of the evidence, to obstruct justice, uh, it makes you wonder, you know, what they knew about him beforehand, uh, if they knew of his jihadist connections. So I, I, I think that uh, with the pending charges against them, uh, that's very good bargaining leverage for the government. The uh, Reuters Nurse Service is reporting that they are that they are suspected not only of of destroying and concealing the Boston Marathon bombing suspect Sarnayev's backpack, uh, which or I'm sorry, laptop computer, which we had reported earlier, but also his backpack. Uh, and there had been a question about what was in that backpack and, and why they disposed of it. Uh, have you heard from your sources on this, Congressman, and, and can you comment at all on the nature of the current charges? Basically, I, I've heard what you're reporting. That's going to be obstruction of justice. It's going to be uh, lying to uh, federal officials. And that uh, they were you know, really suspicious from the start, which is why they held these two on the uh, immigration violation. They, you know, if you recall, they picked them up, and they let them go, and they picked them up the next day on the immigration violation. The third person, I believe they were aware of, you know, the U.S. citizen, but there wasn't enough to hold that person uh, on, uh, on, on charges until today. But uh, also the fact that, you know, two of them, it appears, were in Times Square. Uh, and you wonder, you know, did they overhear any conversations about jihad? Did they, or I, why would he have called? He, in many ways, committed the crime of the century as far as Boston is concerned. Uh, one of the most wanted men in the world, and yet he felt confident enough to call them up and ask them to destroy evidence. I mean, you know, put yourself in that position. I heard you mentioning before, you know, it's hard to get a law-abiding citizen to do something criminal anyway, but on this one, where it was a massacre, this was a Boston massacre, and yet they were willing to carry this out, and he felt confident enough to call them and ask them to do it. And again, Reuters is reporting, not yet independently confirmed by Fox, that the charges say... These three new suspects decided to throw away Sarnayev's backpack after learning that he was a suspect in the Boston Marathon bombing. I mean, the, as I was discussing with Mark Furman, it, realistically, that's the only way it could be, given the, given the nature of how uh, their faces were everywhere, Congressman, that Thursday right. night. And, and, you know, I mean, it would have been tough, especially if you're living in Boston as a college student, to not have seen... Uh, this guy's picture and recognize that he was wanted. And then you get a phone call saying, hey, how about my backpack? I mean, do you think that this goes beyond the two who we believe actually conducted the bombing and the three who now are alleged to have helped cover it up? Well, you know, my understanding is there are other people that are still looking at it. Obviously, you know, we know that the wife is, uh, or, or, or the widow is certainly being looked at. And, uh, there's, you know, I believe there are others that are at least being looked at. It may turn out not to go anywhere, but, uh, you know, this is pretty quick to find three other people involved uh, so soon. Uh, and, again, I think once, if they are willing to cooperate in any way to give any type of evidence, I think this could well expand. It's hard to believe that these two carried out this operation by themselves. This was a sophisticated, uh, coordinated bombing attack. The bombs were put together perfectly. To me, there had to be practice runs with these bombs did nobody know about it was there no involvement by anyone whatsoever and that's leaving aside even any overseas element i'm just talking about in the boston area so again uh it's too early to say anything definite but it was also too early to say anything definite the other day when we thought there were going to be other people arrested now we do have three people being arrested so i would say the best thing to say is this is definitely an open investigation you are the, police on, and the FBI are really following us. You are on the Homeland Security Committee, and uh, therefore this is an appropriate question for you in particular. This, the immigration status of these, at least two of the three new suspects, we're told the third is an American, but these, these two, who we see in this picture here next to Jokar Sarnayev in Times Square last year, they're from Kazakhstan. And we are told that they were in the country on student visas. They were picked up by ICE two weeks ago on alleged administrative immigration violations. And now we hear that one of them, Diaz Kaderbaev, I think it's the one in the blue scarf. I'm not sure. It's one of these two. Diaz Kaderbaev is no longer enrolled 
at UMass Dartmouth. So there's the question of what he's doing in this country on a student visa and whether he should have been here to provide the alleged assistance to Jokar Sarnayev to begin with. Yeah, uh, again, I don't know if that's accurate. It may well be. But I do know this is an ongoing problem we have with universities where we have students here on student visas who turn out not to uh, fulfill their obligations as students, and yet no one reports them or turns them in, and they uh, basically are living here illegally. And that is something that has to be addressed, I think, in any immigration bill. And also, it should be addressed right now, because we, you, know, they, you can't come over here on a student visa and not be a student, uh, or not, not uh, you know, be a full-time student or be a student un- under the terms of your uh, visa conditions. So that uh, adds, again, a- another dimension to this, if we're talking about ways to prevent these types of attacks in the future. Mm -hmm. Congressman Pete King, thank you very much for being here. We appreciate it, sir. Megan, thank you as always.